Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Kumar. I welcome you all to this video. In this video, I'll be talking about how does a switch learns the MAC address and uh, how does it forms the MAC table in fact. Uh, in order to go ahead and form the MAC table, uh, the switch has to go through three simple processes or the three simple steps instead, I should say. The first step is uh, once the switch receives the uh, fragment from the neighbor device, it looks at the fragment header and uh, to be specifically, it looks at the source and the destination MAC address from where that uh, uh, the fragment is received and where it is destined to. And looking at the source and destination uh, information, it adds that information into the MAC table and uh, the MAC table is updated. However, in some cases, it is possible that the destination MAC address is not given into the uh, frame or the fragment header uh, that we'll discuss in a moment. Uh, in that case, the switch will send the ARP request for the destination MAC address. And once it, reply, uh, once it is uh, replied with the destination MAC address from the uh, machine, it adds that entry also to the MAC table. So uh, let's go ahead and discuss this scenario uh, with a little more uh, information or the little more uh, details. So let's assume that we have three devices uh, device A, B, and C, which is the server C in our case, is connecting to one particular switch here. The device A, whose IP address is 10.1.1.1 and the MAC address is AAA, is connected on port number one of the switch. The same way, the uh, device B is connected on port number two and uh, the server C is connected on port number three. Uh, as of now, uh, you can say that device or the switch does not know about any of the MAC address of these devices. The devices are connected to the switch. However, the switch does not know about the MAC address, like which MAC address is connected on which port. And now device A has some data that it would like to send to device B. So in that case, the device A uh, will share or that fragment uh, to the switch in this case, guys, uh, since both source and destination IP addresses are from the same subnet, so that is why the switch will not, or the device A will not add any uh, gateway information to the packet uh, or the, to the fragment. So it will directly send this information to the uh, switch. However, as of now, the device A does not know about the MAC address of the device B or the destination device. So switch will basically look at this information specifically and uh, the device A, as you can see, that will add the its own IP address, its own MAC address, the destination IP address, and it does not know about the MAC address of the destination, so it will add uh, the zero to that uh, particular field. And this information will be sent to the switch. Once switch receives this information, switch will look at first look at the source information, uh, this specific portion, and will update that entry into the MAC table. In our MAC table, the switch will basically add four different uh, information into the MAC table. The first one would be to which VLAN that particular device is connected. In our case, I have taken the VLAN 1 as the VLAN, which is the default VLAN here. And it will add the MAC address information, of course. And it will add the type, how did this switch learn about this MAC address? Basically, there are two types of uh, uh, there are two different types uh, through which we can learn the MAC address. The one is uh, dynamic, the one that we are discussing right now. And the second one is the static one wherein you can manually go ahead and add the MAC entry into the MAC table. And uh, last but not the least, it also adds the information about the port number like this particular device whose MAC address is AAA to which port it is connected. So it adds the information that this device is connected on port number one on the switch and it adds all this information guys and uh, also looks at the destination information however at the destination side we do not have any uh, mac address entry so for that uh, since switch also does not have the destination mac address uh, information in its mac table it will have to request uh, the or, you know, it will have to send the ARP request to all the other ports which are connected to this switch. Just remember guys that our request will be only sent to all the other ports except the port number one because the fragment was initially received from this uh, particular port. So this port was uh, or is considered to be the source port. So 
in that case the switch forms the app request and basically in that uh, app request the switch says that whosoever is holding this ip address which is 10.1.1.2 please reply back with your mac address information and this uh, request will be sent to all the port port number two and port number three as well to as many port uh, you may have like 10 20 whatever the number of ports that you have in your in your scenario that request will be sent to all the ports the all devices which are receiving this request will check that IP address against their own IP address. However, in our case, this IP address matches with this device's IP address. So it will reply back stating that, hey, uh, I am holding this IP address and my MAC address is this. This information will be sent back to the switch and this switch uh, will update that information finally to its MAC table. So now we can see that there are two MAC addresses entries into the MAC table and they both are learned dynamically and the port number is also given so this information is kept on the switch uh, about the uh, both uh, devices like uh, where that devices is connected and what are their mac addresses and this information is also used for the further communication if in case after some time the device p likes to send some data to device a so it will not have to uh, like go ahead and repeat the process it will hold this entry uh, and will process the entry uh, or process that data based on this entry. However, guys, uh, let's assume uh, this. There's one more good thing that you should know uh, that we have added this entry into the MAC table. However, as of now, I'm using port device number A on port number one here. But after some time, I remove this device from the network. I add another computer to this port and certainly as you know that since I'm adding a new device the MAC address for device uh, for that particular device would be the different one uh, but our MAC address table is still uh, updated with the same uh, old entry that it learned dynamically earlier so in uh, and this can cause the of course uh, the data not transferring to the destination and also the network down situation so uh, in that case in order to go ahead and avoid such situations there is a concept of mac aging wherein the switch defines that the maximum time up till which the mac entry uh, is valid into the mac table so let's go ahead and discuss that a little further in with the little more details so in the MAC aging, as you can see that the MAC aging term itself describes the total time before the MAC entry ages out from the MAC address table. And also, uh, if I talk about the Cisco routers, the Cisco routers, the default MAC aging time for them is the 300 seconds. That means that the MAC entry can remain there into the MAC table for five minutes only. You can go ahead and statically tune this value the uh, values can be configured between 0 to 10 million as you can see that the if you configure 0 that means that the mac entry will not be added to the uh, mac address table and uh, this is like you are disabling the mac uh, entry to the table or you, you do not want the mac entry to be updated to the table if you configure the value as 0 and also as you can see that you can configure the amount of time uh, that an entry remains into the MAC table. So this is basically the MAC aging concept, which is very important for the networking. If you do not have this, so probably uh, this can create a major issues into the network. Let's go ahead uh, uh, and discuss a little more about this. So after the MAC aging, guys, I would like to talk about frame switching. Basically, there are three types of frame switching you can see. The first is uh, you can see store and forward the second one is cut through switching method and the third one is frame free fragment uh, we'll go ahead and discuss about this a little more in this uh, video so store and forward let's assume that uh, here that i have a device which is connected to a switch and this switch is also connected to another pc once this device sends the information to switch the switch will keep that information with it it will not forward it to the destination it will check that uh, received fragment against the CRC or the cyclic residency check. Basically, the cyclic residency check uh, in my other video, as I described, that this is for uh, the error detection. Uh, this detects whether the data has been uh, tuned on the path or if there is any data loss or if the data is intact or not. Once the switch 
assures that yes the data is intact and it can be sent to the destination then only it will forward that frame to the destination so this is like store and forward it stores that packet and forwards the uh, packet after detecting or after checking it against the crc mechanism that we have so this is the uh, basic or you can say that overview information about the store, store and forward switch uh, frame switching type the second is cut through the in cut through method guys uh, the switch only keeps the destination mac information and that too from the uh, fragment header it only keeps the six bytes from the frame in this case since it does not hold the data and it receive uh, in this case you can say that once the data is received on the switch the switch keeps that information the destination mac address and looks at uh, like stores the six bytes from the uh, frame and then as soon as it does that it is done with that process it sends the uh, fragment to the destination without even waiting for the uh, complete packet or without even waiting for the complete data to receive on it uh, because of that behavior, the, this behavior makes the switch or, or makes this particular method a little faster as compared to the store and forward method, as you can see. And also that, uh, as, we, as I said, that the, it sends the frame as soon as, as it processes the destination MAC address without the CRC check. So once the complete data or the complete frame is received, that frame is checked against the CRC to make sure that there's no error or there's no uh, problem with that. However, it does not wait for the complete framework from for the complete data to receive. It just simply receives it and sends it to the destination just by processing the destination MAC address. And uh, as you can see that this does not wait for the entire data to receive. Instead, it sends it as soon as it receives it. So this is the cut through process, uh, the cut through switching in nutshell, you can say. And the third one, we have the fragment free switching. Fragment free switching, you can call it as the upgraded method of the uh, cut through switching. It follows the same process, except the uh, like uh, it follows the same process as the cut through switching, but it instead of keeping the six byte information uh, that the cut through switching was doing, it takes it keeps the entire 64 bytes from the frame and sends the information. So this is also a faster as compared to the store and forward method. But yes, it keeps the more information uh, for the destination uh, MAC address and the uh, frame as compared to the cut through one. So in order to understand the three uh, types uh, that I have uh, discussed here better, we have this picture here that in the store and forward method, guys, we completely uh, like the switch receives this entire frame and it checks that frame against the CRC and only if uh, only the CRC if it, the CRC passes this frame or the switch uh, is sure that the data is the error free then only the frame will be forwarded. However, in the fragment free it keeps the 64 bit information with it and rest of the data this one is sent without waiting. And in the third case, guys, uh, the cut through in the cut through message, the switch only keeps this uh, 64. I'm sorry, the six bytes from the frame, and the rest of the information is sent as soon as it is received. So uh, this was about the three switching or the frame uh, switching methods. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Uh, please do share, like this video, and also comment if you uh, like this video, and uh, do subscribe so that you get to know about my upcoming videos regarding the networking concepts. Thank you.